What's up guys, welcome back. First off, Merry Christmas. Second off, we're back out trying to catch some trout. If you watched my last video, uh, Nick Fish, Ish with Fish, and myself, we all went out to try and catch some planter rainbow trout out here in the local, oh, one big one just jumped literally right there. I saw the whole back of the fish. Okay, anyways, like I was saying, we went out and we tried to catch some planter rainbow trout. We failed, failed miserably. So I'm back out at another uh, Bay Area lake. Try my luck again out here on the kayak. I've had good luck at this lake before. And I just saw, I, if I had to guess, just like looking at the back of the fish, that was a, probably a three to four pound trout jump right there. Could have been even bigger, I don't know. But anyways, I'm out here trolling some grubs early in the morning. You see it's pretty foggy. It's a nice little cool morning, good weather for some trout, and uh, we're gonna see if we can find them. This lake that I'm at is pretty much, it's a small, it's basically like a big pond, I don't know, it's not, it's not very big. And it's pretty much flat in terms of like the bottom of the lake. It's around 25 to 30 feet deep, pretty much the whole, throughout the whole lake. So there's not really much structure to find. We just got to try and figure out maybe like a little bit of like a drop off or a ledge where these fish are holding. I did see one jump right here, so that's a good sign. Usually when fish are jumping, that means they're active. And actually there's a good mark on the fish finder right here. But uh, yeah, usually when fish are jumping, that means they're active and feeding. So that's always a good sign. So I'm hopeful that we can put some fish on the board here. It's about eight o'clock now. Got about till noon, maybe one o'clock to try and put together a nice little rainbow trout stalker video. We'll see if we can make it happen. Stay tuned. What's up, man? What's up? How's it going? Just got out here. Nothing? Not yet. I did see, I've seen, I saw one jump though. Good one. I feel lucky. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, the one I've seen a couple along this shoreline over here. Okay. So that's kind of where I'm going. I don't know. Still looking. Oh oh. Can a bite? Can a bite? Take it, take it. Yeah. I think we're on. Fish on. I don't think it's a big one. But there is a fish on here. It's been about exactly an hour since we started fishing, so it's been pretty slow, to be honest. I don't even think I've seen any other boats or kayakers catch any. And I don't think this is going to be a very big one, but it's a clue as to where these fish are. So, but it is a fish, and it's a trout, nonetheless. A little small little guy, but... We'll take it. So there's our first fish there. A little trout. Uh, the one that we want to catch is about 10 times the size of this one, but this is a clue as to where these fish are hanging out. So we're gonna put this one back and hope we can find his big brother or sister. Trout are pretty fragile fish. So if you're gonna be catching and releasing them, you gotta make sure you handle them with care and you don't wanna keep them out of the water for very long. So quick shot for the camera back in the water that one was just fine and uh yeah hopefully we can get the big one next dude i lost one on the rapala did you was it a good one uh, a good one right here oh man and then i saw another good one uh, just roll eat something uh yeah i caught a little one over there oh you did yeah and i just saw another one jump over here too Right there, doing the little fish dance, and it worked. Feels like a better one. All you just gotta do is will the fish to bite, and it comes in every time. We're actually right in the same area where I caught the first one. 
I did a full circle around the whole lake. So I might have to concentrate my efforts right in this little area. Ooh, this is a decent one. Wasn't fighting very much at first, but now once we get him close to the boat, now he decides he wants to wake up a little bit. I've had comments in previous videos on why my drag is so loose. The reason for that is I'm using four pound test here and uh, any tighter in that leader would just snap instantly. So we gotta play it real light and uh, coax him in, tire him out, and then hopefully get this net underneath him. It's a decent fish. There's definitely, ooh, missed him. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I like where this is going. Ooh, that was close. There we go, got him. That one was getting dangerously close to the fish finder and everything else that he could get tangled up on, but we got him. Look at that. That's what came out of that guy's mouth. Looks like a little, like, shad or some kind of little bait fish. There's fish number one, or sorry, number two, first keeper. Uh, probably about a pound and a half, maybe two pounds, something like that. Not a terrible fish, but there's definitely bigger ones in here. All right, that's one on the stringer. Let's see if we can get another one. So I'll show you the exact setup later, but what I'm doing in order to catch those last two fish is just doing a real slow troll, somewhere between one and two miles per hour, super slow. If you were you know, trolling for salmon or if you were using some kind of uh, jerk bait like a Rapala or something, you'd want to troll a little faster to get the action on the lure. But with these grubs, you can troll super slow and uh, you still get good action, still get those fish to bite. So I'm just doing, like I said, a slow troll, somewhere between one and two miles per hour, back and forth through these good areas where I'm marking quite a few fish. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can catch a few more. And then the second part is just doing that fish dance, obviously. That's what really, really pushes those fish over the edge in order to get them to hit your bait. little update. It's now 11.15 and it's starting to clear up a little bit. We've had fog for pretty much most of the morning and now it's finally starting to clear up a little bit. So I'm thinking, I'm hoping actually that this, this is going to turn on the bite a little bit. Hopefully make those lures a little more visible, make those fish a little more willing to bite and uh, yeah we'll see. Getting bit, getting bit. Take it, take it, take it. Yeah, it's on. Fish on. Got him. Just as I was about to head towards the boat ramp. Got one more hook up here. I don't know, I feel like this fish doesn't even know he's hooked. Can't tell if it's a good one or not. I feel like it might be a good one, it's just not, doesn't even know he's hooked. But we'll see. There he goes, taking me around the boat in the kayak. Oh, it's a decent one. Not a huge one, but it's another good one. Maybe a little bit bigger than the other one that we caught, the second one. Just gotta keep him out of the pedals, out of my other line. Right. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. It's definitely bigger than the first and second one that we got. All right. So there's fish number two right there. And not a bad fish at all. I'd say probably about three pounds, three or four pounds, maybe something like that. Probably about 18, 19 inches. Solid fish. There's the second or the first one. I guess the second one. First one we let go. There's the two fish right next to each other. The one that's flopping is the one that we just caught. And then this one that's dead already, that's the first one. There we go. Oh, look at that. Spraying eggs all over the place. Pretty sure these fish are sterile, but 
in the wild, these would become little baby trout. All right, guys, let me show you what I was using to catch those fish today. I tried trolling a few different things, some lures, but this is what caught them. So I got two setups here, one little travel rod. This is like a cheap $30 rod. You don't need anything special. Uh, I'll leave it linked to below. I think it's about like a five foot, you know, like I said, collapsible travel rod. And then this one is a seven foot ultralight uh, with a 1500 Shimano Sierra. So that's a little nicer setup, but to come out here and catch fish, you definitely don't need to go that nice. I mean, I caught fish on this one just as much as, just as much as that one. Six pound test main line. And then I got a tiny, tiny little eighth ounce um, barrel swivel, or sorry, barrel sinker. And you can go anywhere from a quarter to an eighth of an ounce, depending on how deep you want your uh, bait to be suspended. A little bead to stop that sinker from uh, riding up on the swivel, the swivel there. And then our leader, this is a four pound test to a tiny, tiny, ignore that big hook in there, but size eight owner octopus hook. Take one out just so you can see it. In terms of what I'm normally fishing for out on the surf, this is tiny, but as far as trout go, this is pretty average size, I would say. And that's a size eight. Um, and on the hook, today I was trolling these little plastic grubs, and you can get any kind of grub at your local taco store. A lot of taco shops will call them crappie, crappie grubs. But here's what we have here. It's just a little curly tail, one and a half inch maybe. Any little grub like that, different colors, uh, depending on the day. Today, what was biting was chartreuse, but uh, any any given day could be different. So we got a bunch of different colors in here. Let me just show you the fish again, really quick. Here's our two fish, two that I kept. I also got one more little one that I let go. Probably about a, a pound and a half, maybe, and I don't know. I'd say around three pounds. It's pretty fat. So uh, yeah, not a bad day out here. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.